Thank you, uh, Judge. You know, it is report card time for the Democrats. Uh, we are now halfway through the first year of the 110th Congress, uh, and there's no question that the failure on the part of the Democrats in terms of their midterm exam uh, is, is really, I think, a letdown to the expectation of the American people and what they expressed that they wanted uh, in last November's election. I also think it's indicative of a real disconnect on the part of the American people and the Democrat-controlled Congress. Look what just happened in the Senate. Democrat-controlled Congress tried to get an immigration bill up on the floor that, frankly, I think was the wrong bill at the wrong time. The American people want security first. Uh, and, and that's where we ought to be moving in terms of immigration, security first. Uh, but even beyond that, the, the American people, I think, spoke out in November, and they said that they'd had enough of the way that this town operates. Uh, they didn't want continued uh, tax increases, and in fact, uh, Nancy Pelosi and her colleagues promised they wouldn't raise taxes on the American people. And what we see today uh, is with the introduction of the Levin Rangel bill is the beginning of what I see as the biggest tax fight that we're going to have in this Congress. H.R. 2834 is an all-out assault uh, on the tax cuts that have made our economy the strongest and most resilient economy in, in this world. Uh, and in fact, though, uh, the Democrats are trying to uh, uh, cast a, a very large net on these tax cuts, uh, and we will see, I think, when we get back from uh, the July 4th recess, the beginning of a real tax debate uh, that we're going to win on, because the American people want us to win on. They're tired of uh, the attempt uh, to pit Americans against Americans and engage in class warfare by the Democrats. And frankly, our team, as the leader said, is united uh, behind the growth and innovation in our economy, and we're going to continue to hold the Democrats accountable uh, and make sure that we deliver for the American people. Obviously, the American people get it. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about that whatsoever. Um, Eric was just talking about the issue of taxes. Um, zebra doesn't change its stripes. We found not only do they want to increase taxes, but just a few minutes ago on the floor, we saw the Appropriations Committee with their attempt to try and prevent collection of taxes that the American people are not paying, which is to me absolutely outrageous. There are 40 states across this country, including the federal government, that have had great success at private collection agencies doing their job and making sure that every American pays their fair share of taxes, and they were trying to end that program. And uh, to, be, to me, it's just absolutely beyond the pale that this is the kind of thing they're continuing to do. Now, the American people get it, as I said, and the fact is, after six months, you can only talk about reform so much. You have to deliver. Now, every time we point to the fact that they haven't reformed, they simply attack us for something that we did or didn't do in the past. The fact of the matter is, it's not about what we did, it's about what they promised they were going to do. That's why we're talking about these promises that were made. They've come down with more closed rules than we did out of the Rules Committee. They have continued this pattern of preventing members from having the opportunity to participate in this process, and that's not what they promised the American people they were going to do. When it came to ethics reform, uh, what was it? all kinds of talk again and again and again, and they have failed to deliver. And the other word that I would use to describe the last six months has been sloppy. I have never seen this institution run in a more sloppy manner. Time and time again, we just last night saw it, we had to amend the rule to deal with the fact that they didn't comply with the Budget Act and have all the appropriations work done by the July 4th break and we've had to change three of the ethics rules. They prevented members of the House of Representatives from being able to attend charitable events. Well, they obviously didn't intend to do it, but that's exactly what they did. And so time and time again, because of their mismanagement, we have been in a position where we've had to try and help clean up the mess that they've created in the last six months. Questions? The, uh, the immigration bill dead for the House as well as the Senate now? Well, I think uh, the decision there rests with the Speaker. Uh, immigration is clearly an important issue in the country. People want, uh, want it dealt with. 
Republicans continue to believe that enforcing uh, the laws and strengthening our borders is the, the first major hurdle, the first major step. Uh, but Speaker Pelosi is going to have to decide uh, how we're going to proceed in the House. Republicans stand ready to work with her uh, to secure the borders and to enforce the laws. Mr. Boehner, what impact do you think Senator Luger and Voinovich's statements about the war will have both when you come back in uh, July and in September in General Petraeus' report? Well, I've, I've believed uh, uh, all spring, and, and I continue to believe, that we ought to allow General Petraeus the opportunity to succeed. Now, he has a plan in place. He's had uh, the, his full uh, reinforcement of troops only about two or three weeks. And so uh, over the course of the summer, I think we'll have uh, some idea. He did a report uh, on July 15th. He gave an interim report uh, with regards to the benchmarks that were outlined uh, in the supplemental spending bill. i will have another report on uh, September 15th. And so uh, I think it's important, let the chance, let the plan work. Uh, we're going to have members on both sides of the aisle voice uh, their opinions about the conditions in Iraq. Uh, we all wish it were better. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, making sure that we have a, a secure uh, Iraq is in the best interest of all Americans, and for that matter, the rest of the world. Uh, because losing in Iraq uh, will, will allow al-Qaeda uh, and their like-minded souls around the country uh, to expand, uh, to increase their ranks, and, uh, and furthermore, uh, without success in Iraq, uh, we begin uh, the process of destabilizing uh, the rest of the Middle East, which is not in the interest of our country. Mr. Leader, I understand you all play a lot of defense up here and, uh, and try to stop things, and you'll work with the President to do that on, on some issues. But what I'm thinking about is you know, you've been at odds with the President on immigration, and I don't know where you're going to be on Iraq. Can you think of one issue uh, maybe, uh, where you might work together with the White House to play some offense? Uh, we've worked uh, we've worked together uh, with the White House very closely over the course of this year on the issue of spending. Uh, I think that uh, the American people think uh, that Washington uh, spends too much, that we've got more government than they ever wanted, and that we're not spending their taxpayer dollars as wisely as we should. Uh, so you, we're going to continue to work with the president uh, to hone in uh, on those core principles uh, that, uh, frankly, got a little lost over the last few years. As I said earlier... Uh, we are reuniting around those core principles that keep us together as a party. And spending taxpayer dollars wisely uh, is, is, is a big chunk of that. How long do you think it will take you after 12 years before to re-earn the public's trust on that issue? Can it be done in one session of Congress? The sooner the better. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.